How's it going everybody? It's the DIY Reptile Guy and in today's video you're going to see me turn a 27 gallon Sterilite tub that you can buy at your local Walmart for just under $20 into a beautiful display enclosure for an arboreal snake using some of the products that you saw me unbox in my last video. Now this enclosure is going to be for the big female green tree python that you see behind me. She's been in quarantine for about 120 days Usually I only keep them in quarantine for 90, but some of the other animals that came in with her presented some health issues during the quarantine process early on, and they both actually ended up passing away. So I wanted to keep her a little bit longer just to make sure that she doesn't have anything that could potentially compromise my collection. So in today's video, I'm going to be installing a Draco portal from Specialty Enclosure Designs which basically allows you to turn a decent sized tub into a display enclosure by installing the glass door on the side. It's $16 and it comes with the mounting hardware as well as the glass door included. And for that price, you're really not going to find anything else like this product. I'm really excited to try it. I've done quite a few DIY builds over the years for some of my animals. And this is just a really interesting product. It's uh, beautiful when it's done. I've seen some of the pictures on his website and I'm just really excited to try it out. I'm also going to be using some of his bolt-on perch holders like she is already on right now, as well as a wall-mounted perch, a water bowl holder, which I also have in a temporary enclosure right here that you can see. And we're just going to use all these products in one build and I'm really excited about it. So there is going to be a slight problem that I foresee ahead of time. She is a big female and this door is only like 9 by 12 inches, I believe. So it is going to give me access from the front, which will make it easy to change water bowls and paper, etc. But because of her size, I will still have to get her out from the top of the enclosure. I don't really see that as a problem, but a lot of people don't like that. And that's more of a personal preference thing. And I really don't have a problem having to reach in over or from the top and grab her when I need to because I really don't move my green tree pythons that often for routine maintenance and maybe for the occasional photo shoot. So that being said, this type of build might work out a lot better for a juvenile, uh, medium-sized green tree python for most people. I also want to tell you that this is not really going to be an instructional video. He, uh, David, the owner of Specialty Enclosure Designs, already has a lot of those videos up on his channel. And who better to tell you how to put together the products than the man himself? So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. And here she is. I just wanted to get a quick clip of her so you guys can see who's actually going to be going in this enclosure. She is a beautiful sarong female. I haven't gotten a chance to sex her myself, so that's just going on the word of the man I bought her from. But I'm really excited to get her in something beautiful. I said she's uh, spent 120 days in quarantine. I like to keep it nice and simple during the acclimation process, and I'm really excited to see her in an enclosure that just offers a little bit more enrichment as well as uh, some more perching op options. So she's got, uh, you know, typical blue sarong type markings. She is a little nicked up, which is fairly common with imported animals. But I really love her. She's one of my favorite snakes. I did get her out last night actually and handle her for a little while. So I will not be, especially because she is on the edge of the perch here. And I don't want to get her all riled up. But let's go ahead and get this enclosure started. These are the exact dimensions of the tub that I'm going to be using today. It's about $18, I believe, at Walmart. You can probably find it at any place that carries Sterilite as they're fairly popular. So these are gonna be most of the tools that I need for the build, as well as the products I'm gonna be using. Um, Dremel tool to cut the hole for the door, drill, silicone and a cock gun. I have black PVC that I purchased from Formufit. I actually got it on homedepot.com because it's a little bit cheaper. Of course, my specialty enclosure design products, uh, the Draco portal and the perches, and also a vent from ventmasterstore.com, and it's about $2, I believe. It is the tab style with the bug screen. 
Um, those are what I like to use. There are a few different models available. Oh well, some tape. Um, as far as screws go, I use a number eight. I got half inch as well as three quarter. Um, I believe you can also use number 10 screws. He has all this information on his website. I will be using some sandpaper to rough up the perches and a razor blade to clean up the edges of your portal hole before you install it. It's all pretty basic stuff that most people have around their houses. All in all, that wasn't so bad. I did cut a little bit too far on this corner here, but I am hoping that it'll get covered up by the frame when I have it on. If not, no harm, no foul. It'll still be functional, just look a little wonky, which unfortunately sometimes that happens when you're building things by yourself. All in all, I'll say it wasn't too bad. I did uh, leave a little bit too much plastic on this side. I did not tape it down quite as well as I should have. And it shifted just slightly, it looks like, while I was making the lines. But I'll go ahead and clean that up off the camera and we'll move on to the next step. I really like the way it's turning out already. All right, so now we've got the door and the vent installed. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the bolt-on perch holders. It's a pretty simple and straightforward process. You're just gonna drill the holes beforehand as always. Small drill bit first, a bigger drill bit next. I think it's a 5 30 seconds. And then I'm using the number eight half inch bolts.
All in all, this was a really fun build. I did end up having to exclude the Dragonfly perch because it didn't fit, um, as I originally thought it would. But everything else went pretty smooth. I did make a, a minor mistake when I cut the, the hole for the Draco portal, so I have that bottom lip of plastic that overhangs just a little bit. But uh, as far as the overall aesthetic, it doesn't affect it too much. And I do like the black finish of everything. The door slides great. It's got these locking mechanisms here. All in all, I spent about $85 building this. Um, it, it's going to be going to a room that is heated by ambient room temperature. So if you're going to be heating this uh, enclosure individually, you're looking at maybe another $100 to $120 for a heat panel and a good thermostat. But still, when you're talking $185 compared to some PVC display enclosures that can cost four or five hundred when you're adding the cost of heating and a thermostat, that's not really bad at all. And that's it for today's build, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me build this enclosure. It was a lot of fun, and I tried to use as many of the products that you saw me unbox in my last video so you can see how they can be applied to your own enclosure at home. If this is your first time here at my channel, please like this video and subscribe if you'd like to see more. One thing I can say for certain that my first impressions of specialty enclosure designs were correct. You can tell that David really has a passion for this hobby and puts a lot of care and thought into producing these products. And it's always a nice feeling to know that you are supporting somebody that is an active member in the community that you are a part of. If you guys liked these products, please go check out his website. I'm going to leave the link down below. You guys can purchase all of these products for yourself. They're all reasonably priced, and I think everybody should start including these in their enclosures. Until next time, guys, it's the DIY Reptile Guy.